Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanna to talk about this small unit that I've been using on my desktop setup as well as my stereo setup that you see behind you, behind me, <laughs> not behind you. But anyways, the iFi Pro iCan Signature Edition is a headphone amplifier, but also a pre-amplifier. And it's very interesting, even though it doesn't have a DAC inside, which I actually prefer because then I can switch to my own DACs. I prefer to use my own DACs because DACs are one of those things that can be outdated quickly compared to other equipment or speakers that you may have. And plus the fact, you know, I, want, I don't wanna go on the rant too long, but DACs are one of those things that you can fine tune to your component to get a better sound, better synergy going. If you have a DAC stuck inside, there's only so much you can fit into a small chassis like this, and you may end up with a mediocre DAC that you may regret because you can't change it later on. Anyways, so I prefer this unit without a DAC, but that doesn't mean that this unit doesn't have a lot of features. In terms of features, it has a lot of features in true iFi fashion. iFi is one of those companies I feel like that packs a lot of features into the unit and gives you know, a lot of value to it. So let me explain the settings, the features that you get on this unit. So first of all, it has solid state, tube, or tube plus. So the tube plus setting is less negative feedback, uh, which means that you get a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more fuller sound, more natural harmonics of the tube that you're using on this unit. But I feel like the sound you get, the actual sound you get out of the tube plus is somewhere between the solid state and the tube setting. So really the tube plus should be the middle setting if you actually uh, account for the effects that it's taking into the sound, but it's at the end here. So just keep that in mind. It comes with the X space. So it has the 10 Hertz, 20 Hertz and 40 Hertz. And this, if I have any complaints about the features, which I really don't, I think this is kind of my problem. 10 Hertz and 20 Hertz is, even if you boost it on a headphone, even in a stereo setting, that's kind of like the bass that you feel, not necessarily hear as much. So when you increase those regions, you don't hear as of a drastic change. You may hear a little bit, um, but overall you don't really notice much. At least I didn't. But the 40 Hertz one, that one is the one that I keep going back to because that's more evident. Really adds warmth to some of the headphones that I tried, even in my stereo system. But I have to say, the bass boost is not over-exaggerating, and I think that's what I like, because it's just, just a tasteful boost. It doesn't make it crazy. Just a tasteful bass boost that still retains the overall kind of tonality. And the 3D function is nice. It's nice if you have a closed back set of headphones, for example, and you want a larger soundstage. Now, you have to be careful with the setting to not overdo it because when you overdo it, things start to sound a little bit thin. Things sound, start to sound a little bit too less focused, especially in a stereo setting. So to play around with it, you will know what I'm talking about when you get it right. Sometimes it will just go too far and you'll be like, okay, I went too far with that one. But it's nice to have as a feature. And every time you change it, you notice the difference in the staging. Um, it doesn't necessarily get wider, but what you end up getting is more of a dispersed sound, more of a dispersion between each instrument, which I really think is neat. Um, and depending on the setup you have, it can work better, and sometimes it doesn't work as well. So it's a setting that is left to kind of add after you decide the tube plus, the tube, you know, what solid state, or what kind of setting you want there, and then the X boost setting, and then I would look into the soundstage setting if you really want to tweak the last bit of it. And it also has gain settings. So it has 0, 9, and 18 dB of gain. So as the number increases, the more volume you're gonna get. So depending on the headphone, depending on the system, you adjust it so that your volume knob doesn't start cranking. If it starts cranking at like 12 o'clock, then we have a problem. We wanna dial it back a little bit. But anyways, you set it to your settings. I had it around 9 dB, the middle setting, and it worked with my desktop setup, my power speakers, headphones, and even in my stereo setting. 
but that doesn't mean it's gonna work like that in every system. So keep that in mind, play with the gain setting as well. Now, but here's, here's one thing though. There's a thing about adding features, having a lot of features, and it's another thing about useful features. And I like the iFi Pro iCan Signature Edition and also the original because it has useful functions. And the unit comes with virtually every connection that you can think of for headphones. It has a four pin XLR, of course, a quarter inch, yes. 3.5 millimeter, yes. A 4.4 millimeter balanced, yes. And on the back, you have a plethora of inputs and outputs. You have XLR balanced inputs, three RCA inputs, balanced XLR outputs, and of course, RCA unbalanced outputs. And of course, we talked a little bit about the two being used, which is the NOS NOS New Old Stock General Electric 5670 tubes, which by the way, is enclosed in this sexy looking glass thing. It just, it's beautiful. It's really well thought out. And the overall build quality on this thing is pretty phenomenal. The aluminum chassis, as well as the ventilation, it's not just holes, but really nice style that is done in the heat sink, on the side, on the top. It is nice ventilation going on, but with style. It's not just, you know, holes. It's really nicely done. And I really like the look, the elegant touch, the gold finish on the signature is really nice. And I've said this before, the you know, gold finish is one of those things that's really hard to get it right. Because if you get it wrong, then now it starts to look cheap. But I'm really pleased with the you know, quality of the finish. The gold accents really, really looks nice on this unit. And you know, the overall build is just phenomenal. It really is one of the better looking units that I have reviewed. And aside from that, the overall attention to detail on this is really nice. Like the groove down here that you don't really see, you know, the padding here that, you know, is meant to go on top of other iFi units that has this, you know, uh, you know, glass, beautiful glass enclosure of the tubes, but also it can work on going just on a desktop, you know, as an isolation. But like overall, it's just really well thought out. And when I review stuff, I often look for signs of has the engineer, has the team behind, you know, iFi or, you know, Burson or whatever company, have they thought this through? Is this a good product that the end user will appreciate? And my answer is absolutely. I mean, the curve here, this is not a flat chassis like it may seem on the camera. It has a little bit of groove to it. And that may not seem like much, but when you put it on a lighting situation, you get this nice texture that doesn't look like a flat, cheap chassis. So overall, this unit really speaks quality to me. Original Pro ICANN was what drove me to review the signature version in the first place. It's definitely less sexy looking than the signature version, but the original Pro ICANN, uh, like I said, was what drove me to review the signature version in the first place. And plus the fact it was one of my tools but also something I enjoyed a lot. And when I say tool, it's because I got the uh, Pro ICANN when I used to work at the high-end retail store. And it was one of those units that I would test a lot of headphones with. It was one of those, you know, my reference units, so to speak, right? If you think about it, it was my reference piece unit that I would test a lot of headphones with because it was just that good and I knew the capability of this unit very well. So in my opinion, it was one of the best bang for your buck matching with planar magnetic headphones. In fact, aside from the money aspect, it was one of the best matches synergistically with Hyphaman and also the Odyssey headphones. It just sounded so good. And this was a specific setting I'll share with you right now that I had with those headphones. It was the tube setting, the middle setting, not the tube plus, but the middle setting, and that was it. I sometimes added a little bit of bass boost around 40 hertz. I don't really add 10 or 20 hertz. Um, that just it's, it's a bass response, in my opinion, that you feel more 10 and 20 hertz than you you know hear. When you increase the 40 hertz region, then you definitely add warmth and body and more fullness to the headphones if that's what you're going for. And plus the fact it never ran out of power. Every time it was able to power any headphone that I plugged into it. So 
Anyways, long story short, it was a really good match and that's why I wanted to review the signature version. Now, I've been playing around with the signature version specifically for about a year now or close to that. And here's some stuff I found. The sound wise, it is very similar to the Pro iCan. I would say the original Pro iCan is just as good as the signature, but the signature is a little bit more quieter. It has a little bit more nuance. And that could be that they are using better components as i5 stated in this unit. Also, it comes with a upgraded power supply that is supposed to reduce the noise floor. It certainly does look very nice. And I can, I can attest that the new unit, the signature version is a quieter, more nuanced version of the Pro ICANN. But I'm glad to say they retained the synergistic match I was talking about with planar magnetic headphones. But also I was surprised by my findings using dynamic headphones like my Sennheiser HD 600. So that's one of my main headphones I use. And the reason I use it is because it's a very neutral, natural sounding headphone in my opinion. And when I'm recording and editing these videos, for example, I can use my Sennheiser HD 600 and I can trust it so that I get the right volume levels, the right you know, sound, and so you guys don't get murdered by me talking and talking, right? But let's say I'm done working. I'm late at night, I'm done working. I'm gonna kick back in my chair, in my office chair, and I wanna listen to some music. I wanna listen to some tunes. Now, if I adjust a few settings on the iFi signature, now I have a whole different sound signature that is enjoyable, musical, and it is just so good, full sounding. And that is the Tube Plus setting. So on dynamic headphones, I found the Tube Plus setting with a little bit of boost on the 40 Hertz bass boost again, to really give that nice, warm, yet detailed, because you know the Sennheiser HD 600 is a pretty neutral headphone, really gives nice balance with a little bit of an exaggeration in the bass, but that really gives me a nice, soothing um, after office hours on the headphones. Really enjoyable, really musical. I absolutely love it and it synergistically works really well. And also I've been lately using the Meze headphones and that unit is wonderful as well. It's a more detailed sound. So on that unit, I like to have the bass boost, but also I would like to add um, the solid state instead of tube because that really gives the sparkle, the snappiness of the headphone that I'm reviewing. So it gives me a lot of flexibility with different types of headphones because of the settings it has. So depending on the headphone I'm using or reviewing at the time, really this has multiple different benefits here because you have the soundstage expander, you have the bass boost, you have the tube right, solid state tube and then two plus. So there's multiple different combinations that you can try to make the synergistic work. And when it clicks, you know it clicks because it just gets fleshed out. It sounds really, really atmospheric and grand and uh, full and a musical sound that you immediately get. The other, other settings, you know you got it wrong because it's kind of like thin, it's not as musical, unless that's the sound you're going for, right? And then you get it right and then it just clicks and it's just, it just so, it just blooms. That is the word, word I'm looking for. It just blooms. It just makes it fuller, more enjoyable, more distinctive. And that is kind of what this unit is. It's almost like a camera lens, right? When you get the focus right, you adjust it, you adjust it, and then you dial it in and then you click it. And it's like, ah, yes, the focus is right. And that is kind of feel the feeling you get when you're playing around with this unit. And for the price they're asking, which is about $2,300 right now, it's not bad. I mean, it's not inexpensive, but it's a quality headphone amplifier that is flexible with multiple different headphones because of the features that it has. Plus, it's a nice pre-amplifier. I've been mainly using it on the um, Atom Audio, the new series that I got in here for review that I won't talk too much about, but that's what I've been using with the i5 Pro iCan, and the sound is warm, it is lush, but accurate at the same time, snappy, fast, articulate, 
in the low frequency in my room, I, right now, I used to, I'm not using a subwoofer with the Atoms because of how low the speakers go. And I can tell you the iFi iCAN is definitely adding to that because when I took it out of the chain and used you know, some other components with it, a little bit less expensive, other tube gear that I'm testing up right now, then I lose that really low bass thump. So it definitely has added that warmth and bass extension to my near field setup with the active speakers that I'm using right now or power speakers I'm using right now. In my stereo setting, I'm currently in the process of testing the Typhons. And you know, it's one of those speakers that I go to because I help design it. I know those speakers very well. So it's one of my references in terms of testing other equipment. And the immediate feeling I get is that in a true stereo setting, the bass doesn't go as low as some other preamplifiers, more full size preamplifiers that I have, but it makes it up for it in the sound staging and the imaging department. So it has this really sweet sound to it. So whenever I hook up the Pro ICANN signature, the sound stage becomes larger, more dispersed, but at the same time, it's more focused, it is more detailed, sparkly, everything, the minute differences, nuances is more apparent. So it may not be the end in terms of, you know, making your speakers go really low, but the nuances that comes through, really the i5 signature I can really makes that shine. Now that's without touching the sound staging settings. Now sound staging settings at times can make things more thin. So depending on the situation, you may want it to be totally turned off. And that was kind of the case with the Typhon speakers. I had it totally turned off because when I turned it on, it was a little bit leaning towards the lean side, but Wow, when I had it at the tube plus setting on this and just the tube setting as well, I, I don't think I like the solid state setting on the Typhons as much, but every time I had it on the tube or the tube plus setting, man, the sound staging, the imaging was just spectacular with these iFi Pro iCAN, no matter what kind of amplifier I really put behind it. Um, so I, I was very pleased, I was very happy with the overall sound, the full bloom sound, yet nuanced detail sound that I got in my stereo setup. So if that all confused you, I'll break it down for you like this. The i5 Pro iCAN Signature Edition in a desktop environment, it seems to be more able to grasp those lower frequencies and bring that information to you with the flexibility compared to other units in this price range in a desktop setting. But in a stereo setting, it is still a small unit. So compared to other full-sized preamplifiers, it doesn't go down as deep in comparison to let's say the Dana Frips that I have, the flagship that I have from Dana Frips, um, or you know the audio note preamplifier, for example. But it makes up for that, like I said, in terms of the airiness, the detail, the micro details, the nuances, it's really impressive at that. So if you are getting the Pro iCAN signature in a stereo setting, I would personally add a subwoofer because I want that bass. But in terms of the nuances and the micro details and the beauty of the vocals and stuff like that, the fullness and the soundstage, um, really it nails it perfectly. It is really nice in that regard. So while you may need to add a subwoofer if you look for, you're looking for that more lower bass extension, the iFi, does other things extremely well other than the bass region compared to full-size preamplifiers in a stereo setting. Plus, it's a great headphone amplifier. And it really doesn't make it hard to connect a uh, external subwoofer to it because it has RC outputs as well as XLR outputs. So I've been personally using the XLR outputs to my amplifiers and the RCA outputs to my subwoofers. So that really brings out the bass, the nuances, and honestly, it is a phenomenal setup. And if you already have subwoofers and you're not worried about the bass, but you want something that is nuanced, detailed, uh, without being bright, large soundstage, beauty, you know, beautiful vocals that's coming from the center, um, nuanced, nuanced vocals, smooth, but detailed, beautiful tonality, then this is a really good preamplifier 
when it's on the solid state section can become a little bit more aggressive. I would say a little bit more detailed oriented. So it can get a little bit bright at times, but I find it very articulate with solid state settings. So let's say you're watching a movie, then you can just switch to the solid state and you get articulate vocals. So again, really flexible unit. It was gonna be a long video, I realized, because I'm talking about all these features, and every time I change a feature or you know the functionality of this, you get a different type of sound. You get a different type of presentation that you can really cater to what you like. And that's what makes this unit so special and why I'm reviewing this. And it's probably one of the hardest reviews I'm doing because of the features, because usually features are, in my opinion, on most cases, not that useful. It's there, it's something that I set and forget, but in the iFi's case, I'm always switching, I'm always you know, able to switch and get a positive result. So that really changes the direction of my review because I'm every time I change something, I go, okay, so it did this, gotta record that. It, oh, it did this, gotta record that. You see what I mean? So that's a good thing though. It's a good thing that this review is long. It just means that the features are working and iFi has done a great job. So with that being said, I will say that this unit is fantastic. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. I've been using it for about a year, so I think I know the ins and outs of using this unit. And the last thing that I will criticize, and this may be a small criticism, and that is the remote. And the reason I bring this up, even though it's a small criticism, is that I was checking the website, the iFi website right before making this review, um, just to double check my information so that I don't give any misinformation to you guys. And I almost did. I had this remote down as a plastic remote, but matter of fact, visiting iFi's website quickly confirmed that this is an aluminum remote. And I bring this up because it does not feel like an aluminum remote. This feels like a plastic remote and upon closer inspection, yes, I guess you can say it's an aluminum remote, but it's kind of hard to tell it's aluminum. It doesn't feel high quality or like a metal, you know, the buttons, everything is functional. Everything is very well thought out on the remote, but it's just not very high quality feel that I get of this remote, let alone a metal remote. It doesn't feel like a metal remote. It feels like a cheap, inexpensive remote I would get from, let's say, SMSL or topping units. So again, that may be a little bit you know, harsh, but that's the feeling I got out of the remote. Again, it's just a remote. It works perfectly. I think the layout of the remote is really well thought out and it does all the functions that you require it to do. So it's not the end of the world, but that's just something I wanted to point out as someone who's been using uh, you know, the iFi Pro iCan signature for a while now. So that's pretty much it. That pretty much concludes my review. I know this one was a little bit long, but hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was entertaining to you. And if it was, please click that like button and subscribe because I have way more, way more interesting stuff coming very, very soon. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day, have a great time, and I'll see you guys on my next video.